So, reaching section 44, it begins after one of those catalogs that we had talked about, right? Those long extended lines, we just kind of get lost in that listing, and then boom, it is time to explain myself. Let us stand up. What is known, I strip away. I launch all men and women forward with me into the unknown. Notice again here, with Whitman, it's inclusive, right? He's not limiting. He's not saying only this group, not this group, it's everybody. The clock indicates the moment, but what does eternity indicate, right? Eternity. So what is Whitman saying about death? What does Whitman think about the afterlife? What do we, how do we see this in Song of Myself? We have thus far exhausted trillions of winters and summers. There are trillions ahead and trillions ahead of them. Births have brought us richness and variety, and other births will bring us richness and variety. It's almost like a sense of reincarnation. Go through one life, and then we have another. I do not call one greater and one smaller. That which fills its period and place is equal to any. Were mankind murderous or jealous upon you, my brother, my sister? I'm sorry for you. They are not murderous or jealous upon me. It has all been gentle with me. I keep no account with lamentation. What have I to do with lamentation? Listen to this. I am an acme of things accomplished. Right, an acme looks like the, the, the top of the mountain. I am an encloser of things to be. My feet strike an apex of the apices of the stairs at the very top on every step bunches of ages and larger bunches between the steps all below duly traveled and still I mount and mount not done right not done we're still moving in that sense of movement transcendence rise after rise bow the phantoms behind me Afar down, I see the huge first nothing. Hmm, the huge first nothing. I know I was even there. Hmm, I waited unseen and always and slept through the lethargic mist and took my time and took no hurt from fetid carbon. At the very beginning, right, Whitman was there. Long I was hugged close, long and long. Immense have I been the preparations for me. Faithful and friendly, the arms that have helped me. Cycles ferried my cradle, rowing and rowing like cheerful boatmen. For room to me, stars kept aside in their own rings. They sent influences to look after what was to hold me. Before I was born out of my mother, generations guided me. So that, right, so we're kind of looping back, we're connecting with that idea that Whitman had before about births and other births, right? My embryo has never been torpid. Nothing could overlay it. For it the nebula coerced to an orb, the long, slow strata piled to rest it on. Vast vegetables give it sustenance. Monstrant sorids transported it in their mouths and deposited it here. See, Whitman has always been here, right? His self, maybe not his, his physical body, but that his self has always been here. It's timeless. It's transcending. All forces have been steadily employed to complete and delight me now on this spot, I stand with my robust soul. And we're ready to go ahead and just kind of keep our momentum going and start to continue, move forward towards the closing sections of the poem. From 48. I have said that the soul is not more than the body, 
And I have said that the body is not more than the soul. See that, that contradiction, right? That dichotomy. And nothing, not God, is greater to one than oneself is. Hmm. What does Whitman see regarding the relationship with God? And nothing, not God, is greater to one than oneself is. Yeah. How could this be? Remember with uh, Romanticism, one of the hallmarks that you can hang your head on is individualism. That idea that the individual, right, is the arbitrator of good and evil and right and wrong of what is truth. It's the individual. It's the self. And whoever walks a furlong without sympathy, sympathy, excuse me, walks to his own funeral dressed in his shroud. And I, or you pocketless of a dime, may purchase the pick of the earth. So we have a little bit of a catalog coming here. And I say to mankind, be not curious about God, for I who am curious about each am not curious about God. Interesting. For I who am curious about each, in other words, about each other, everybody else, am not curious about God. Why should we not be curious about God? Possibly we know, right? If we're not curious about something, then that means we would know it, right? Or God's not greater than the self. I hear and behold God in every object. God. Yet understand God not in the least. Oh, that's good, right? You can see and perceive God without having to understand. There God is. Okay, check mark in the box. What's next? Don't have to be curious about it. Nor do I understand who there can be more wonderful than myself. Oh, the self coming up again. Why should I wish, wish to see God better than this day? I see something of God each hour of the 24th. That's lovely, right? To see God in every hour of the day. And each moment then, in the faces of men and women, I see God. So Whitman sees God in the faces of everyone that he meets in every hour of the 24 hours of a day and in my own face in the glass. When, when Whitman looks in the mirror, what does he see? He sees God. I find God. I find letters from God dropped in the street and everyone is signed by God's name. And I find them where they are, for I know that wheresoever I go, others will punctually come forever and ever. 